Okay, question number 10 on the uh, 2009 Math A Regents exam. This is the expression quantity negative 2 a squared b to the third n quantity uh, times the quantity 4 a b to the fifth n quantity times the quantity 6 a to the third b squared n quantity is equivalent to one of these expressions. Uh, notice how I state quantity at the beginning of a parenthesis and end quantity at the end of a parenthesis. Basically, we are multiplying all of these terms together. And the, the general strategy here is to collect all the constants and multiply them, uh, collect all the powers of A and multiply them, and then collect all the powers of B and multiply them using exponential rules. So let's start with the constants. We have negative 2, 4, and 6. So I'm just going to have a big old parentheses here and have negative 2 times 4 times 6. Okay, because this is multiplication, we can rearrange these terms any way we like. So next, let's have a look at the powers of a. We have a squared, a to the first, even though it's not written there, uh, plain old a is a to the first, and then a to the third. So let's multiply these out. We have a squared times a, and I'm just going to put a 1 up there because that is a to the first, times a to the third. And then we'll end the parentheses. I should probably make that green as well. There we go. Okay, and next we have the powers of b. So b to the third, b to the fifth, and b squared. So we'll write this in here. We have b to the third times b to the fifth times b squared. Okay, and now what we want to do is add all of these things together. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, multiply. We are multiplying. We're not adding uh, just yet. So if we multiply uh, negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8. 8 times 6 is 48, but it's negative, so this is negative 48 right here. Then we're going to take the powers of a. And now when we are multiplying exponents, a squared times a to the third, we, we add the exponents together. So 2 plus 1 plus 3 is 6, and this becomes a to the sixth. And then we'll do the same thing with the blue over here. I think that's the right shade of blue. There it is. And we do the same thing, b to the third, b to the fifth, b squared, all multiplied times one another. So we have 3 plus 5, that's 8, plus 2 is 10. So it's b to the tenth. And these things are all being multiplied by one another. So the answer is going to be negative 48 times a to the sixth times b to the 10. And lo and behold, there it is, right there. Okay. Let's go on to problem number 11, which is right here. And it says, what is the value of n if the number 0. 0. 0. 0.0000, oh my, there's a lot of zeros here, is written in the form 8.2 times 10 to the n? This is a scientific notation problem. So basically, what we do is, since we have a decimal, n is going to be negative. So we can immediately cut these two guys out. Okay, because this number is smaller than 1. And then we just count. So let's count very carefully. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is 6 places that we've moved the decimal. Well, it leaves 5 out. There is the answer. 8.2 times 10 to the negative 6. If you move that decimal place back 6 places, you will have this exact decimal here. Okay, let's try number 12. There it is. And it says the sum of square root of 27 and square root of 108 is one of these expressions. Okay, if you're using a calculator, if you're allowed to use a calculator on these tests, then take the square root of 27, add it to the square root of 108, write that number down out to like three decimal places, 
and then just compute the square root of 135 and compute 9 times the square root of 3 and compute 3 times the square root of 3 and compute 4 times the square root of 27. And one of, one of those numbers, one of these four here, is going to match uh, the sum of these two, and that's going to be your answer. Of course, that doesn't really tell you anything about what's actually going on with the square roots. So what we want to do is break each of these square roots down uh, as, as simply as we can. So let's take the square root of 27. Okay, and we can write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Okay, and we should all know that the square root of 9 is exactly 3, because 3 times 3 equals 9. Right? And the square root of 3 remains the square root of 3. I cannot factor the square root of 3 uh, in any other way. So the square root of 27 is exactly uh, 3 oops, and it undo, 3 times the square root of 3. Now we're going to tackle the square root of 108. That looks a little bit uglier. I don't see, you know, if it was a square root of 10, it'd be really easy. Uh, it was square root of 108. So we just, we just start factoring it and seeing, you know, what we can do. So the square root of 108, well, it ends in 8, so that means it's an even number. So I'm going to try pulling out uh, a factor of 2 and see what happens. There's square root of 2 times square root of 54. Ah, but 54 factors into something nice as well. This is square root of 2, we keep that there, times the square root of 9 times the square root of 6, because 9 times 6 is really 54. Okay, so now we have, I'm going to move that square root of 9 over here, this becomes 3 times the square root of 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, doesn't really help us. We can't add these two terms yet. We can't add 3 times square root of 3 and 3 times square root of 12 because the square root isn't the same. It's square root of 3 and square root of 12. But we can simplify square root of 12 some more. Okay, so we can write the square root of 12 as, we'll keep the 3, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And now, now we're down to pretty much our last step here. The square root of 4 is 2, right? So 3 times 2 is 6. And then the square root of 3, we just drop that down. That's just the square root of 3. And now look at this. 6 times the square root of 3 plus 3 times the square root of 3. When we add these two together, and we add them, right, we get 3 plus 6 is 9 times the square root of 3. And that is the answer, 9 times the square root of 3. Okay, and uh, yeah, we have room. We'll do one more. Uh, which equation has the solution set 1 and 3? So which of these quadratic equations has the solution set 1 and 3? Well, you could take 1 and put it into all these equations and see if you get a true statement, and then you can put 3 into all those equations and see if you get a true statement, and the one equation where 1 and 3 work is, is the correct one. Uh, but that would take a little bit. That would take a bit of time. But if our solution set is 1 and 3, what that means is that we can factor some sort of polynomial to look like this. x minus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. Because, remember, the solution set to this is x equals positive 1 and x equals positive 3, which is exactly uh, the same solution set as what we have here. Well, now we just do FOIL on this. So x times x is x squared. I'm going to do negative x here. Then I'll do negative 3x up there. And then I'll take negative 1 times negative 3. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive 3 equals 0. Okay? 
And then we just combine these terms, and we get x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And this equation has roots, has a solution set of 1 and 3. So which one of these equations has that? Well, uh, minus 4x, okay, plus 3, bam, there it is. That's the one we're looking for. And you probably figured that out before I even circled it. Oh, what just happened? There we go. I clicked the wrong mouse button. There we go. All right, see you in the next video.